Hello YouTube, what's going on? It is uh, Monday, Monday, October. I'm cheating, I'm looking at the Obama phone. At least I'm trying to. Sometimes this thing's a pain in the ass to turn on. Uh, it's uh, October 4th, 2021, 5.39 p.m. And, um, and yeah, I've got such a steady hand carrying this, uh, carrying this phone. But uh, I'm not shooting vertical today, so you can be thankful for that. Uh, feels like there's a storm getting ready to hit. It's kind of kind of windy. Look at those look at those flags flying above the post office right now. And some pretty uh, pretty ominous looking clouds. Crossing my fingers, I don't get uh, don't get caught out in the rain. Um, yeah, I just dropped off another Taylor Swift record at the post office to be shipped. I uh, still got three left in stock, uh, none of which are listed currently for sale. I need to I need to get working on that. But uh, two of them I got photographs I've done today, so still making progress on my uh, on my. Um, yeah, on my eBay store. So those listings don't do themselves. And yeah, still walking, still taking the bus. Although, I'm not really planning on taking the bus right now. I'm just walking to where I'm going. That's one of those kind of signs that I've mentioned that seem to have disappeared in the 12 years since I used to ride the bus all the time. Uh, it doesn't... Um, it doesn't... Uh, well, what do you call it? It doesn't... Um, that one doesn't have a route number sticker on it. They used to always have stickers indicating, like in the blue space, the blue empty space in the sun, there'd be little white stickers that would have the route number and then also the name of the route. And uh, that one doesn't uh, doesn't have the sticker, but at least the sign is there. So, uh, I do I do miss the way that Tim P used to have them back then. Tim P would not only have that on the side of the road. But it would also have um, a um, a schedule posted for that particular route, uh, indicating exactly when the buses. You know, so you could look at a map and see. This is neat. I've never walked through this. I think I've walked through this. It's a it's Vera Castle. Looks like the visitor center. I've you know I've shot some video of like Vera Castle from a distance, but honestly. If, 50 years in Phoenix and I've never ever actually been to it um, so this is kind of neat um, anyway what was I saying so the uh, oh, I just, <laughs> look landmark I completely lost my train of thought um, completely lost my train of thought <laughs> oh, that's, uh, that's rich this is neat Owner, City of Phoenix, Operator, Tavero Carrera Society. Or face mask. Uh, ain't that some shit. This is kind of, I've never walked in here. This is really kind of nice and scenic. And it looks pretty much closed right now, which doesn't surprise me. Not like I'd really want to go do a tour right now with the, what looks to be a storm brewing. Oh, so anyway, I was talking about the, oh yeah, yeah, this little open area is uh, definitely gated and closed, so. Sorry, wasn't able to show you much of that, but, um, but hey, I can walk a little bit closer to the castle. Um, stop, as you see the airplanes flying by overhead. Um, yeah, that is the flight path. It, this is kind of more or less under the flight path to Sky Harbor. Which is uh, over in that general direction. All right, so, uh, oh, let's see. Well, whoops, dropped my box. Um, I, I literally forgot what it was I was talking about. That's golden. Oh, man. Yeah, it's, uh, it's Dan Dan live and unscripted. That's what you get. You know, I, I 
didn't really have that problem when I was a radio personality. And, and that's, uh, A, I was mildly scripted. But the main reason was that um, one thing I was kind of taught by some more experienced radio people was the importance of gravity, which, of course, is not <laughs> really a feature of my YouTube vlogs. Uh, morally, you know, with these things, I generally run, start running video and I just run them until I get where I'm going. Just let let my thoughts flow out. But, um, but yeah, I, and, and that was back in the days when almost all radio personalities were expected to speak over the uh, intros and outros of songs and always have the music underneath their voice. So, you know, I was, my, my, that, that kind of limited how much time I had to talk. So anything I was planning on saying, uh, and I did have a very personality driven show at most stations I worked at. Um, yeah, I would, I would know <laughs> exactly how many seconds I had to talk and I would kind of, you know, think, you know, I, I would have it in my mind what I was going to say, not exactly how I was going to say it, but what I was going to say. And with that time limitations of often, you know, 15, 15, 20 seconds, um, yeah, it, it kept me on point. It did. Oh, this is a nice walk. I don't know that I've ever walked this particular piece of sidewalk before. Uh, I'm walking westbound on Van Buren Street uh, from uh, the post office, which is a little bit uh, a little bit east of uh, 42nd Street on the south side of the road, and I'm on the south side of the road to uh, uh, to 52nd Street, which is also where the uh, Loop 202 freeway is. Um, this is kind of neat. Now I'm like really, really very gasoline because this is a a pretty notable landmark that is this is from all the um, staff and service entrance only. Fifty forty one east and Buren. No smoking beyond this point. Okay. Owned by the city of Phoenix. And this looks like it's the uh, original road to it. Obviously, the visitor center came along many years later. Still architecture. And old power lines running to it. It's kind of neat. You know, I wish I knew a little bit more of the history of that. I know I've read about it, but it's just kind of something I don't familiarize myself with much with. It's my understanding that at one point in time it was a residence for somebody. And then somehow all the property got donated to the city of Phoenix. It actually takes up a big piece of real estate here uh, between the post office, the, the big post office, and the Loop 202 freeway, and then on the uh, between Van Buren Street and Washington Street. Uh, I do really wish that... Uh, you know, it's funny, I was talking to, I was talking to my friend Jeff about this property along here and who owned it and it totally slipped my mind that this is all city of phoenix public property for the tavera castle uh, it does look like there's a little pad right here oh now this is fun so here they've actually got one of the bus route one of the bus stop signs but yeah it doesn't have a tag it doesn't have the tag saying what route is at it it's got the information of the no parking sign. And they conveniently placed the sign behind a bus shelter where nobody can see it. That's, uh, that's Phoenix City Planning at its finest right there. Um, speaking of Phoenix City Planning, so this is a newer style bus shelter. It's been going in all over Phoenix and replacing the older beige ones. And at the bottom, it has a wider footprint. You know, the space between that, that curved foot that comes out right there and the one in the back. Um, I'd say by about a foot. And there was one time I was at a city council meeting and I was there specifically for scooter related stuff. But I, I enjoy those, and honestly. I, I, if I had more time, I would probably go to all of them just to throw in my two cents. But uh, uh, somebody had come in to complain that on some of the streets where they've put these in, where they live, um, that foot being further out at it, 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 the front there, with the width of the sidewalk, 
was the difference between him being able to roll a wheelchair past it and him not being able to roll a wheelchair past it. Like, did, did nobody think about that? Did nobody think maybe that's something they should measure and make sure that, uh, that somebody in a wheelchair can get past it? And then my question is somebody who's just insanely financially frugal is what the hell was wrong with the old bus the old bus shelters like was there as far as I could tell there was nothing wrong with the old beige bus shelters and there's plenty of bus stops that don't have bus shelters how about put the new bus stops the new bus shelters at stops that don't have them and the ones that already had the beige ones just leave well enough alone and why did those get ripped out and what happened to them did they just get thrown away scrap for metal um, I really don't know Anyway, so it looks like, looks like here I can kind of see how that, that decorative brick wall kind of goes around. So it does look like that's a private pad that's probably available. Somebody wants to buy it and put a business there or something. Uh, but there's nothing there right now. Uh, anyway, I was talking to my, my friend Jeff about how if you're coming, from, coming southbound from 52nd Street, which is the street I'm facing north looking at right now, and you can see there's quite a bit of traffic on 52nd Street. And it's got a good sidewalk and a decent bike lane. And it goes all the way north to, uh, to quite a thoroughfare to McDowell. And then it goes, and it's, it's just a quite a thoroughfare to Thomas. And then it goes all the way north to oh, uh, Osborne Road. But, and this is pretty crucial for people who are biking or walking, uh, to the south, right here, it turns into a freeway entrance. And I've, I've driven this many, many, many times in my vlogs. Um, yeah, you just go southbound on 52nd Street, and bam, you're on the 202 headed east. 202 east. Um, and so from this point on, no pedestrian. That was so weird. I lost my counter and I was, it looked like it wasn't recording anymore. I think it is though. Uh, anyway, from that point on, there's no, there's no pedestrian access. Like pedestrians are not supposed to go south of where I'm at here. But roughly a quarter mile south of here is Washington Street. And there's no direct connection between here and Washington Street. You've either got to go a half mile to the, uh, to the east to 56th Street here, you gotta go a half mile to the west to 48th Street. When if there was just simply a path here, not a street, just a pedestrian path, right, right here. You go right along the sidewalk and then you know be be a little bit be a little bit like kind of right there along the fence. It could be separated from the uh, I'm so tempted to walk it right now. Trying to do. Actually, you know what? It's Monday. I really have nothing better I need to be doing right now. And I don't see a no pedestrian sign right here. What are they going to do? Tell me to leave. I would imagine DPS and Phoenix PD have much better things to do. And then again, how many videos are there on YouTube? People exploring quote unquote abandoned properties that you know belong to somebody. You know they're trespassing. So, okay. Uh, see how walkable this is anyway the reason I'm pointing this out is what we were discussing because he doesn't have a vehicle right now either we were discussing how the fact that he lives just north of here um, just south of here where there's not a where, where you have to go literally a mile to the east or a mile to the a half mile to the east or a half mile to the west to, to get a street to go a quarter mile south to the next thoroughfare um, there's there's a light rail station directly south of here so all the people that live in this area that I'm at in the area to the north are people who are you know commuting by bike from from areas up to two miles to the north can't just simply directly go to the light rail station that I am less than a half mile away from or can they hmm Looks like when there's a will, there's a way. Um, 
I didn't see it. Now, try to speak to sign. Did, did anybody else? I, I don't believe there's a. I don't know. That looked like a. That looked like a accessible pathway to me. It's kind of neat. It's old ruins. I do see a no trespassing sign over there, but it's not very. <laughs> if I wasn't looking for it, I wouldn't see it. It's kind of hidden. Well, looks like there is a path here. <laughs> somebody, somebody ripped that uh, ripped that fence open to make themselves a path. But it looks like a lot of people have been using it. This is great. It's great. And you got the old brick walls, but it's uh, not very. Or you know, so it looks like it's made out of old uh, ripped up sidewalks. Uh, not as nice looking and maintained as the ones that are visible from major streets. I really hope this gets me down to, uh, what's that? really hope this gets me down to, um, oh, this is awesome. It's like a, oh, it's plastic. I was hoping it was like a, so when it was somebody had made like a, like a curtain out of washers and string, but it's just plastic garbage junk. Oh well. This is kind of neat. You know, this is funny. We were I was just discussing with him how there should really be a bike path, like a multi-use bike pedestrian path, in this easement between the freeway and the private property to the uh, to the east, and I, which I completely forgot, is not private property at all, but is actually City of Phoenix property for the uh, Tavera Castle uh, Historic Monument. But, uh, man, part of me wants to edit this video and show this to, uh, show this to my city council member, but it just made my luck that instead of getting a uh, instead of getting a nice uh, multi-use uh, bicycle, ooh, I think there was an urban bunny or something. I saw some kind of critter running. I wish my vision was better. Uh, instead of getting a nice you know bike route, multi-use path, I just get that fence that I walked through repaired. Although based on the handiwork of whoever was there before me, I don't think it'll be too long until somebody with uh, wire cutters fixes it. This is actually not too bad. I think I could ride a scooter on this. I wouldn't want to do it at night, but in the daytime where I can see, um, it's pretty cool. I'm seeing to the left, we got a, a cement drainage culvert. That's a dot land, and I'm sure the fence right there, the chain link fence, I'm sure that's what separates between City of Phoenix property and A dot property. Uh, which, in, in my opinion, both are completely acceptable places to put a uh, put a multi-use path. I don't, I don't see why A dot should be limited to, to just providing freeways for cars um, along the easements that they have. Back in the corridors like this, I think providing bicycle uh, infrastructure was every bit as important. Now this may be be getting cut off soon. I'm pretty uh, pretty low on my battery right now. A little while ago, I, I got my 10 percent 10 percent pop up, so it might die soon. Halloween kills. That sounds like a fun movie. Wow, this is a totally, totally usable path. Well, my friend Jeff and I were talking about this, and he said there used to be a path, but it's fenced off, and you absolutely couldn't get to it anymore. But uh, and, and it looked like it was supposed to be, but apparently that's <laughs> some, somebody is has taken care of that situation themselves in a, in a quite glorious way. So, I get that. Wow. Not, not happy to see all of this clutter. It kind of looks like a homeless encampment, actually. Wow, somebody stole a uh, Sky Harbor <laughs> Sky Harbor baggage uh, cart. Brought it over here. That's wonderful. 
yeah, this is, this could, this could be a route of a really useful pathway um, in bike route, multi-use path, because right here, it comes out at a bus stop. It comes out at a bus stop. And of course, this one lacks a sign saying saying what route it services, because for whatever reason, those signs have all have many of which have disappeared. But um, there's a gate there for uh, access for uh, eight hours. And the positive thing of that is that there's a there's a ramp here, so the bicycle can easily swing over here and then get on the bike lane. Um, and while there's not an actual crossing rail here. This puts, puts it really close to that crossing over there. This comes out really close to the crossing over there, where you can get to the other side to get on the, the bike lane going in the opposite direction. Or you could just ride on the damn sidewalk, because it's wide and it's not like there's a lot of pedestrians through here. Um, and it's not quite as close as I was thinking it was, but up ahead, I kind of see it was a little fuzzy, but up ahead is that light rail station. So yeah, this, this path definitely, for pedestrians, connects this area and saves literally a, over a mile of walking if we weren't driving. It's pretty fascinating. This is not what I was planning on doing with this video whatsoever. And this is absolutely fascinating. It's amazing the things that you find when you walk as opposed to driving. Um, anyway, on that note, I think I'm going to wrap this up because I've gone over 20 minutes. Once it gets over 20 minutes, these videos become difficult to get uploaded. And um, I need to go over to my friend Jeff's place. He's hopefully going to resolve the whole uh, my phone issues, which are at this point are getting too numerous to mention. But I'm, I'm, my the phone number that the Obama phone came with is lingering. Uh, for some reason, it's blocking some messages from some carriers, but not messages from other carriers. Um, some people, when I text them, it says it's from my number, so they know it's me and I have no problem texting with it. Other people, when I text them, it, even though I've, it's been a full week since I've changed the, ported my new number over to this, or my old number over to the Obama phone, um, some people still get text messages that show it's from that other number, which theoretically doesn't exist anymore. So, uh, I'm just hoping that we're able to able to get that handled. I, I'm a little bit worried we might not be able to because I do believe um, it just occurred to me that I, I think Assurance Wireless runs on business hours like Eastern Standard Time or Central Standard Time. That might create a problem. Anyway, we'll see what we can do, at least with all the information that I have on, on, on my box, which I brought with me. Uh, we might be able to handle things, some of the things we need to do via their website. So, Anyway, yeah, I'm going to wrap this up. Uh, thanks for coming along with me on the walk and the, uh, the wonderful discovery of that, that path. <laughs> and uh, maybe there'll be more videos today, but certainly be uh, be more, probably more tomorrow. I'm, I seem to be doing about two, three a day. So. Anyway, thanks. Thanks for watching.